Welcome to the infrastructure review of the RC3 this year, 2020. What the hell happened? How could it happen? I'm not alone this year. With me is Lindworm, who will help me uh, with the slides and everything else. Um, I'm going to say before, and this is going to be a great fuck up, like last year, maybe. We have more teams, more people, more streams, more of everything. And the first team and Lindworm, who I'm going to introduce, is the shock. Are you there? Ah, uh, yeah. So I've got to go to the shock. Yeah, it's kind of a stress this year. We only had about 18 heralds for the main talks, RC1 and RC2. And we have introduced about 51 talks with that. Everybody from his home setup, which was a very, very hard struggle. So we all had a metric ton of adrenaline and excitement without within us. So here you can see what you have seen, how a herald looks from the font. And so it does look in the background. Oof, that was hard, really hard for us. So you see all our different setups here do we have. And we are very, very pleased to also have set up a completely new operation center, the Herald News Show, which I really, really like you to review on YouTube. This was such a struggle and we have about, oh, wait a second. So as we said, we're a little bit unprepared here. I need to have my notes up. There were 20 members that formed a new team on the first day. They made 23 shows, 10 hours of video recording, 20 times the pizza man rung at the door, and 23 Mato bottles had been drunk during the preps because all of those people needed to be online the complete time. So I really applaud to them. That was really awesome what they brought over the team and what they brought over the stream. And this is an awesome team. I hope we see more of. Yusuf, would you take it over? Oh, no. My, my, I'm my boat, my bad. So is the heaven ready? We need to go to the heaven and have an infrastructure review of the heaven. Okay. Du hörst mich noch? Ja, hallo, ich bin der Rasiel aus dem Heaven und ähm, yeah, Heaven is ready, so uh, welcome everybody. Uh, I'm Rasiel from Heaven and I will present you um, the infrastructure review from the Heaven team. Um, we had some angel, angel statistics um, scrapped out um, a few hours ago and um, on this year we have not so much angel as last year because we had a remote event but we had a total of uh, 1487 total angels from which 710 arrived and even more uh, of 300 um, angels that um, at, uh, at least still that, uh, did one shift. And um, in total, um, the recorded work done to that point was um, roughly um, 17 and 75 weeks of uh, done working hours. And um, for the RC3 world, we uh, also prepared um, a few goodies so um, people could come visit us and um, so we provided um, a few badges there and um, 
every angel that um, for example found our extinguished or uh, ex expired extinguisher and uh, also um, extinguished a fire in heaven um, the first batch was achieved from um, 232 um, of our angels and um, even um, last but still a good number of uh, 125 angels um, accomplished to help us and extinguish the fire that broke out during Grimadent. And um, with, with that numbers in, in check, we also will jump into um, our heaven. So I would like to show some expressions um, and impressions from it. We we had um, quite the team working to do exactly what the heaven could do, um, manage its people. So we needed our heaven office. And um, we also did this with respect to your privacy. So um, we painted our, color, uh, our clouds white as ever. So we cannot see your nicknames and you could do your angel work, but not be um, bothered with us asking for your names. And um, also we had prepared um, some um, secret passage to our back office. And every time on, on the real event, it would happen that uh, some um, adventurers would find their way into our back office. And so we, we needed to provide that opportunity as well, as you can see here. And let me say that some adventurers tried to find the way in our sacred digital back office, but only few were successful. So um, we hope everyone found its way back uh, into the real world from our labyrinth. And we also did not spare any expenses to um, do some additional uh, update for our angels as well. Um, as you can see, um, we, we tried to do some um, multi-instance support. So some of our angels also accomplished to split up and serve more than one angel at the time. And that was quite awesome. And so we try to provide the, the same things we uh, would do on Congress, but now from our remote offices. And um, one last thing that doesn't normally doesn't need to be said, but I, I think um, in this year and with this different kind of event, I think it's necessary that um, the heaven as a representative mostly for people trying to help make this event awesome. Um, I think it's, it's time to say um, the things we do take for granted. And that is thank you for all your help. Thank you for all the entities, all the teams, all the participants, um, that achieved the goal to bring our real Congress that many, many entities missed this year into a new stage. We tried that online. It had its up and downs, but I, think, I still think it was an awesome adventure for everyone. And um, from the Heaven team, I can only say thank you. And uh, I hope to see you all again in the future uh, on a real event. Bye and have a nice new year. Hello. Hello back again. So uh, we now are switching over to the signal angels. Are the signal agents ready? Hello. Yeah, hello. Um, welcome, to, welcome to the infrastructure review for the signal angels. Um, I have prepared some stuff for you. Uh, this was for us, uh, slide please. Um, this was for us the first time running a fully remote uh, Q&A session set, I guess. We had some experience with the uh, um, Divoc and had gotten some help from there on how to do this. But uh, just to compare, our usual procedure is to um, 
have a signal angel in a room. They collect a question on their laptop there and they communicate with the herald on stage and they have a microphone like I'm wearing a headset, but in there we have a studio microphone and we speak questions into it. Um, yeah, but remotely we really can't do that. Next slide. Um, because, well, it would be quite a, quite a lot of hassle for everyone to set up good audio setups. So um, we needed a new remote procedure. So we figured out that the Signal Angel and the Herald could communicate with a, by a pad, and we could also collect the question in there, and the Herald will read the question to the speaker and collect feedback and stuff. So we had a 175, no, 57. Yeah, 57 shifts, uh, and sadly we couldn't fill five of them in the beginning because there was not enough people already there. And yeah, also technically it was more than five unfilled shifts because for some reasons there were DJ sets and other things that aren't talks and also don't have Q&A. Uh, yeah, we had 61 angels coordinated by four supporters, so me and three other people. And we had a 60 additional angels that, in theory, we wanted to do signal angel work, but didn't show up to the introduction meeting. And uh, yeah, next. For, as I've said, for each session, or each talk, we created a pad where we put in the questions from IRC, mastered on Twitter, and uh, where we have a bit more pads than talks we actually handled. And uh, I have some statistics uh, about an, an estimated number of questions per talk. Uh, what we usually assume is that uh, there's a question per line, but uh, some questions are really long and have to split over multiple lines. There are some structured questions with headings and paragraphs. Uh, some heralds or signal angels removed questions after they were done. And also there was some chat and other communication in there. So next slide. Um, we took a Python script, downloaded all the pet contents, read them, counted lines, removed the size of the static header. And uh, yeah, in the end, we had uh, 179 pets and uh, 1,627 lines if we discount the static header of nine lines per pad. So that in theory leads to about nine questions in quotation marks because it's not really questions, but lines, but it's an estimate uh, per talk. Uh, thank you. Talk and what I've learned is never miss the introduction. So the next in line are the line producers. Ha 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 STB, are you there? I am here, in fact. So, <laughs> so the people a bit older might recognize this melody badly sung by yours truly and uh, other members of the uh, line producers team. Um, and I'll get to why that is relevant to what we've been doing at, at this particular uh, event. Um, so what does what do line producers do? What does an Aufnahmeleitung actually perform? It's basically communication between everybody who is involved in the production, the people behind the camera, and also in front of the camera. And so our work started really early, um, basically at the beginning of November, taking on like prepping speakers in a technical setup and rehearsing with them a little bit and then uh, enabling the studios to allow them to actually do the production, coordinate on an organizational side. The technical side was handled by the VOC and we'll get to hear about that in a minute. Um, but getting uh, all these people synced up and working together well that was quite a challenge and that took a lot lot of mumbles with a lot of people in them uh, we only worked on the two main channels um 
there's uh, quite a few more channels uh, that are run independently of kind of the central organization. And again, we'll get to hear about the details of that in a minute. Um, and so we provided information. We try to fill wiki pages with relevant information for everybody involved. So that was our main task. So what does that mean specifically, the production setup? Uh, we had 25 studios, uh, mainly in Germany, uh, also one in Switzerland. Um, these uh, did produce uh, recordings uh, ahead of time for some speakers, and many did live setups for their own channels and also for the two main channels. And I've listed uh, everybody involved in the live production here. Um, and there were 19 channels in total. Um, so a lot of stuff happening. 25 studios, 19 channels uh, that broadcast content produced by these studios. So that's kind of the Eurovision kind of thing, where you have different uh, studios producing content and trying to mix it all together. Um, Again, the VOC took care of the technical side of things very admirably, but uh, getting everybody on the same page to actually do this was not easy. For the talk program, we had over 350 talks in total, 53 in the main channels. Um, and so handling all that, uh, making sure everybody has the speaker information they need um, and, and uh, all these organizational stuff, that was a lot of work. So we didn't have a studio for the main channels, the 25 studios or the, 90, the, the, the live channels, the 12. They actually did provide the production facilities for the speakers. So we can look at the next slide. Uh, there's a couple more numbers and, of course, a couple pictures from us working, basically, uh, from today. We had 53, channel, uh, 53 talks in the main channel. Um, 18 of them were pre-recorded and played out. Uh, we had three uh, where people were actually on location in a studio and gave their talk from there. And uh, we had 32 that were streamed live, like I am speaking to you now, uh, with various technical bits that, again, the VOC will go into in a minute. Um, and we did a lot of Q&As. I don't have the number how many talks actually had Q&As, but most of them did. And those were always live. We had a total of 63 speakers. We did prepare at least the live Q&A session for um, and help them set up. We helped them record their talks if they wanted to pre-record them. Um, so we spent anywhere between one and two hours uh, with every speaker to make sure they would appear correctly and in good quality on the screen. And then during the four days, we, of course, helped coordinate between the master control room and the 12 live studios to make sure that the speakers were where they were supposed to be and any technical glitches could be worked out and decide on the spot if, for example, uh, the line producers made a mistake and a talk couldn't happen as we had planned because we forgot something. Um, so we rescheduled and found a new spot for the speakers. So apologies again for that. And thank you for your understanding and helping us uh, bring you on screen on day two and not day one. But I, I'm, I'm very glad that, that we could work that out. And that's pretty much it uh, from the line producers. I think uh, next up is the Bach. Thank you, STB. Yes, you're right. The next are the rock and Kunzi and JWCAC Alex are waiting for us. Uh, Franzi from the VOC. 2020 was the year. Hmm? Hi, this is Franzi from the from VOC. 2020 was the year of distributed conferences. We had two DVOX and the FrostCon to learn how we are going to produce remote talks. We learned a lot of stuff on organization, big blue button and Jitsi recording. We had a lot of other events, which was just streaming like business as usual. So for RC3, we extended the streaming CDN with Two new locations, now seven in total, with a total bandwidth of, of about 80 gigabits per second. We have two new mirrors for Media CCCDE and are now also distributing the front end. 
We got two new transcoder machines, AFAS enhanced setup. We now have 10 AFAS with uh, own productions on media CCD. So the question is, will it scale? On the next yeah. slide. Yep. Yeah. Next we slide. Will see that it did scale. We uh, did produce content for 25 studios and 19 channels. So we got lot of lots of recordings, which will be published on Media CCC in the next days and weeks. Some have already been published. So there's a lot of content for you to watch. And now Alex will tell us something about the technical part. My name is Alex, pronoun it's it's. I will not tell you the technical part first, but more of the organization. I was between the rock and the line producing team and now a bit how it worked. So we had those two main, main channels, SE1, SE2. Those channels have been produced by the various studios distributed around the whole country. And those streams, this is now the upper path in the picture, went to our interest relay, to the FEM, to the master control room. In Ilma now, there were a team of people adding the translations, making the mix, making the rec mix down, making records, and then publishing it back to the streaming relays. All the other studios produced two channels. Those channels took the, also the signals from different studios, make a mix down, etc., published to our CDN and relays, and we published to the studio channels. As you can see, this is not the tutorial setup we had in the last year in the present. So on the next slide, we can see to what this leads. Lots of communication. We had the line producing team. We had some production in, in, the, in Ilman now that has to be coordinated. We have the studios, we have the local studio helping angels. We have some mumbled there, some Richard here, some CDN people, some web where something happens. We have some documentation that should be. And then we started to plot down the communication paths. Next slide, please. If you plotted all of them, it really looks like the world, but this is actually the world, but sometimes it feels like they're just getting lost in different paths who you have to ask, who do you have to call, where are you, what's the shortest path to communicate. But let's have a look at the studios. First, go going to Kaus West, Kunzi. Yes, on the next slide, you will see the studio set up at Chaos West TV. So thank you, Chaos West, for producing your channel. At the next slide, you see the Vicky Packer Television and Fernseh Stream in VTF, who have the internal motto, absolut nicht sendefähig, cause of recording. But even then, at some studios, they look more like studios. So this time at the next slide, at the Hack. Yeah, at Hack, you will also see some of the bloopers we had to deal with. So, for example, here you can see there was a cat in the camera view. So. Yeah, and Alex, tell us about the open infrastructure orbit. The open infrastructure orbit show in this picture, you can see it's really artsy, how you can make a studio looking really nice, even if you're alone, they're feeling a bit comfy, a bit more hackish. But you have also those normal productions as a next slide, the Chaos Studio Hamburg. Uh, yeah, at Chaos Studio Hamburg, we had uh, two regular walk cases, like you know, from all the other conferences, and they were producing uh, on site in a regular studio setup. And last but not least, we got some impressions from Chaos Zona TV. As you can see here, also quite regular studio setup, quite regular, no. There was some Corona views ongoing, and this is we had a lot of distancing, wearing masks, and all the stuff that everyone can be is safe. But C3 yellow, C3 gelb will tell you something else about it. But look, let's look at the nice things. For example, the minor issue. We were on the second day, we were sitting there looking at our nice Grafana. Oh, we got a lot of more connections. The server is increasing. The first question was, have we enabled our cache? We don't know. But the number of connections is growing. The people are watching our streams. The interest goes up. And we were, well, at least the, the 
the people are watching the streams. If there's also it's a website on the website, who cares? Their interest works. But then we suddenly get relations. Well, something did not really scale that good. And then you see on the next slide the issue. We switched pretty fast from after looking at this traffic graph. Well, that's interesting. Into well, we should investigate. We get thousands of messages on Twitter DMs. We get thousands of messages in Rocket Chat, IRC, and suddenly we had a lot of connections to handle, a lot of inquiries to handle, and a lot of phone calls, etc., to handle. And they have to prioritize first the hardware, then the communication, because otherwise the communication won't stop. On the next slide, you can see what our minor issue was. So at first, we get a lot of connections to our streaming web pages, then to our load balances, and finally to our DNS servers. A lot of them were quite malformed. It looked like a storm. But the more important thing we had to deal with was all those passive aggressive messages from, the, from, peop from different persons who say, well, you can't even handle streaming. What are you doing here? And we are working together with C3 Infra team, thanks for that, how to scale these trace even more just to provide the people the connection power they need. So I think in context of last years, we, we, we don't need to use more bandwidth. We showed we can provide even more bandwidth, bandwidth if we need it. And then now tearing everything down. So is it time to shut everything down? No. We won't shut everything down. Um, the studios can keep their endpoints, can continue to stream on their endpoints uh, as they wish. We want to keep in touch with you in the studios, produce content with you, improve our software stack, improve other th things like the ISDN, the Internet Streaming Digital Node, uh, the project for small camera recording setups for sending two speakers needs developers for the software also kevin needs developers and testers what's kevin oh we have prepared another slide the next slide kevin is short for killer experimental video internet noise because we initially wanted to use obs ninja but there are a couple of licensing issues. There is not everything of OBS Ninja is open source like we wanted. So we decided to uh, code our own OBS Ninja style software. So if you are interested in doing so, please get into contact with us or visit the wiki. So that's all from the VOC, and we are now heading over to C3 Lingo. Exactly, C3 Lingo. Oscar should be waiting in Studio 2, aren't you? Yeah, hello. Um, Hi, uh, yeah, I'm Oscar from C3Lingo. Um, we will jump straight into the into the stats uh, on our slides. As you can see here, we translated 138 talks this time. Um, as you can see, it's also way less languages than in the other chaos events that we had, since. Um, our second languages team that does everything that is not English and German uh, was only five people strong this time. So we only managed to do five talks into French and three talks into Brazilian Portuguese. And then on the next slide, we are uh, looking at our coverage uh, for the talks. And we can see that uh, on the main talks, we managed to cover all talks that were happening uh, from English to German and German to English. Uh, depending on what the source language was. And then on the other languages track, um, we only managed to do 15% of the talks from the main channels. And then on the further channels, which is uh, a couple of others that also uh, were provided to us in the translation team, we managed to do 68% of the talks. But none of them was, uh, were translated into other languages than English and German. 
on the next slide, uh, some uh, global stats. We had 36 interpreters, uh, which in total managed to translate 106 hours and seven minutes of talks into another language simultaneously and uh, the maximum number of hours one person did was 16 hours and the minimum number of hours the, the average number of hours uh, people did was around three hours of translation across the entire event all right then uh, i also have some anecdotes to tell um and uh, some some mentions i want to do we had two new interpreters that we want to say hi to um we had a couple of issues with uh, the digital thing that we didn't have before with uh, regular events where people were present. For example, the issue of uh, sometimes when two people are translating, um, one per person starts to interpret something on a wrong stream. Maybe they, they were watching, watching the wrong one, and then the partner just thinks they have more delay or something. Or, for example, uh, a partner having a smaller delay and then thinking that the partner can suddenly reach my, read minds because they can translate faster than the other person is actually seeing the stream. Uh, those are issues that we usually didn't have with uh, the regular stream, but only with, uh, with uh, the regular events, not with uh, remote events. And uh, yeah some some hurdles to overcome um another thing was for example on when uh, on the r3s stage the audio cut out uh, sometimes for us and uh, but uh, because one of our translators had also already translated the talk twice at least partially to uh, because and uh, it was already cancelled after those uh, they basically knew most of the content could basically to do a powerpoint karaoke key translation and um, was able to do most of the talk uh, just from the slides without any audio um yeah and then there there also was um uh, yeah, the last thing I want to say is actually I want to say uh, big, give a big shout out to the two of our team members that uh, weren't able to interpret with us this time because they put their heart and soul into this event happening, and that's STB and Kati. And uh, that's basically everything from C3 Ringo. Thanks. Hello, hello, C3 subtitles is it now? TD will show the right text to his uh, to his slides you already saw a minute ago. Okay. Okay, hi. So I'm TD from the C3 subtitles team and next slide please. Uh, so just to quickly let you know how we get from the recorded talks to the release subtitles where well, we take the the recording videos and apply speech recognition software to get a raw transcript and then angels work on that transcript to correct all the mistakes that the speech recognition software makes and we again apply some auto timing magic to to get some raw subtitles and then again angels do quality control on these tracks to get released subtitles. Next slide, please. So as you can see, we have various subtitle tracks in, in different stages of completion. And these are seconds um, of material that we have. You can see all the numbers are going up and to the right as they should be. So next slide, please. Um, in total, we had 68 distinct angels that worked four shifts on average. 83% of our angels returned for a second shift. 10% of our angels worked 12 or more shifts. And in sum, we had 382 hours of angel work for 47 hours of material. So far, we've had two releases for RC3 and hopefully more yet to come and 37 releases for older congresses, mostly on the first few days where we uh, didn't have many recordings. We have 41 hours still on the transcribing stage uh, of material, 26 hours of material in the timing stage, and 51 hours material in the quality control stage. So there's still lots of work to be done. Next slide, please. Um, when you have transcripts, you can do fun stuff with them. For example, you can see that important to people in this talk are people. Um, we are working on other cool features that are yet to come. Stay tuned for that. Next slide, please. Um, so to keep track of all these tasks, uh, we've been using uh, a state-of-the-art, high-performance, log-free, no-SQL columnar data store, aka a Kanboard. 
in the previous years. And because we don't have any windows in the CCL building anymore, we had to virtualize that. So we're using Kanban software now. Um, at this point, I would like to thank all our hardworking angels for their work. And next slide, please. If you're feeling bored between congresses, then you can work on some transcripts. Just go to c3subtitles.de. If you're interested in our work, follow us on Twitter. And there's also a link to the release subtitles here. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you, TD. And before we go into the POC where Drake is waiting, I'm sure everyone is asking, why are those guys selling, uh, saying um, next slide? So uh, wait. In the end, we have the infrastructure review of the infrastructure review meter going on. So be patient now. Drake, are you ready in Studio One? Okay. Yeah. Hello, I'm uh, Drake from the Phone Operations Center, and I'd like to present you um, our numbers and maybe some anecdotes um, at the end of our part. So please switch to the next slide. And let's get into the numbers first. Um, so first of um, first off, you um, registered about 1,950 uh, uh, 5,195 5, SIP extensions, which is about 500 more than you registered on the last Congress. Um, also, you did about um, well, 21,000 calls, um, a little bit less than on the last Congress. But uh, yeah, we are still quite proud of what you have used our system with. And yeah, it run quite stable and yeah. As you may notice on the bottom, we also had about uh, 23 decked antennas um, at the Congress or at this event. So please switch to the next slide. And this is our um, new feature. It's, it's called the uh, next slide. It is called the Event Phone Decentralized Decked Infrastructure, which we especially prepared for this event, um, the App DDI. So we had about 23 RFPs online throughout Germany um, with uh, 68 um, decked telephones uh, registered to it. Um, but it's not only the um, uh, the German uh, part that we covered. We actually had one mobile station walking out uh, through Austria, through Passau, I think. So indeed, we had an European event phone decked uh, decentralized infrastructure. Um, next slide, please. Um, we also have some anecdotes. So uh, maybe some of you have noticed that we had a public phone, a working public phone in the RC world where you could call other people on the SIP telephone system. Um, and also other people started to play with our system. And uh, I think about yesterday, um, someone started to introduce the C, uh, C3 fire. So you could um, actually control a flamethrower through our telephone system. And I'd like to present here a video. Um, next slide, please. Maybe you can play it. I have quite a delay in waiting for the video <laughs> to play. So what you can see here is um, the C3 fire system um, actually controlled by a deck telephone somewhere in Germany. So um, next slide, please. We, we also provided you with um, SSTV uh, servers um, via the phone number 229. Um, that you, um, yeah, where you could receive some pictures from event phone, um, like a postcard, basically. So basically, you could call the number and receive a picture or some other pictures, some more pictures. Uh, and next slide, please. Um, yeah, basically, that's all from uh, the event phone. And with that, we say thank you all for the nice and awesome event and uh, yeah buy from the first certified assembly POC. Bye. Thank you POC and hello GSM. Linksys is waiting for us.
Yeah, hello. Um, I'm Lynxis. Um, I'm from the GSM team. Um, this year was quite different, as you can imagine. Um, however, um, next slide, please. So, um, but we managed to get a small network running um, and also a couple of SIM cards registering. Um, so, where are we now? So, next slide, please. As you can see, we are just there in the red dot. There's not even a single line for our five extensions. Um, but even we manage 130 calls over five extensions. And uh, next slide, please. Um, so we got um, so we got five extensions um, registered with four SIM cards and three locations. Uh, with mixed um, technologies, also two users so far, sadly, and one network with uh, more or less zero problems. Um, so let's take a look on the coverage. So next slide, please. Um, so we we are quite lucky that we managed to get an international uh, network running. So we got two um, two base stations uh, in Berlin, one in the hackerspace in Afra and another one north of Berlin. And uh, yeah, one uh, one of our members is uh, currently in Mexico. And uh, yeah, he's providing uh, the, the remote chaos uh, networks there. Um, yeah, so um, that's basically our network. Um, so before we going uh, to the next slide, um, we have um what what we have done so far is um yeah it's we are just uh, two people instead of uh, 10 to 20 and had some fun with uh, improving our network and preparing for yeah the next uh, congress and um next slide please and uh yeah now i'm closing with the edge computing uh we improved our edge uh, capabilities and um yeah i wish you a uh, uh, hopefully better year and uh, yeah maybe see you next next year remote or in person have fun thank you and uh, I give a hand to the Lindworm for doing the slide DJ all the time um, he now is to switch to the Hexen who are next um, they bring an image and Meltzai is waiting for us in studio 3 Hello, what's phones without people? So I'll give you now an introduction and now we hear how many people we needed to run the whole Hexen assembly. We had around 20 organizing Hexen and we had around 20 speakers in our events and we had uh, in total around 40 events, but I'm pretty sure that I even don't know all of these. As you as you've realized, our world is pretty large, so we needed around 7 million pixels to uh, display the whole Hudson world, and that needed around 400 comments on, uh, on our GitHub corner of the internet. Um, around 130 people received the fireplace badge in our case, and around 100 people tested our swimming pool and received that badge, so great a year for not going really to swimming. Also, around 449 people uh, showed some very deep uh, dedication and checked out all memorials in our Hexen assembly. Congratulations for that. There were quite many of these ones. Our events were run over a big blue button externally from the, from the Congress. And so we had, starting from day zero, no lags and were able to host up to 133 people in one session. And that was quite stable. We also introduced, uh, found new members, around 30 new Hexen joined just for the Congress. And we increased now to the size of 440 Hexen overall. Also, somewhat, uh, we got new Twitter accounts following us. So we have added over 200 more Twitter accounts. And so you know, our messages are getting heard. But Besides the virtual world, we also did some quite physical things. First of all, we distributed over 50 physical uh, goodie bags to the people with microcontrollers and self suit masks in it, as you can see on the picture. And also, sadly, we shopped so many RC3 Hexen themed trunks that they are now out of stock, but they will be back in January. Thank you. 
No, thank you. Um, I'm going to send thanks to the Chaos Partinen, Chaos Pet Inen, um, who are waiting in Studio One. Hi all, this is Mike from the Chaos Patanin team. We've been, welcoming, we've been welcoming new attendees and underrepresented minorities to the Chaos community for over eight years. We match up our mentees with experienced Chaos mentors. These mentors help their mentees navigate our world of Chaos events. Divac was our first remote event, and it was a good proof of concept for RC3. This year, we had 65 amazing mentees and mentors, two in-world mentee mentor matchup sessions, one great assembly event hosted by two of our new mentees, and a wonderful world map assembly built with more than 1,337 kilograms of multicolor pixels. Next slide, please. And here's a small part of our assembly with our signature propeller hat tables. And thank you to the amazing Chaos Patanin team, Fragilent, Yali, Azriel, and Leela Fish and to our great mentees and mentors. We're looking forward to meeting all of the new mentees at the next Chaos event. Yeah, I think that was my uh, call. That was great. So next up, we'll have the, let me see. The C3 Adventure, are you ready? Hello, my name is Roy. And I'm Matt. And we will uh, talk about the C3 Adventure, the 2D world, and what we did to bring it all online. Next slide, please. OK. So when we started out, uh, we uh, looked into how we could uh, bring a Congress-like adventure to uh, the uh, remote experience. And on uh, October, we started with the development. And uh, we uh, had some trouble in that we had uh, multiple upstream merges that gave us some problems. And also due to just Congress being Congress or remote experience being remote experience, we needed to introduce features a bit late or add features on uh, the first day. So off was merged just in 4.30 p.m. Uh, a.m. in the first day. And um, on the second day, we finally fixed instance uh, jumps, you know, when you walk from one map to the next. We had some problems there, but on the second day, it all went up. And I hope you have all enjoyed the uh, badges that have finally been updated and brought into the world today. What does that all mean? Um, since we started implementing, there have been 400 Git commits in our repository, all in all, including the upstream merges. But I think the more interesting stuff is um, what has been done since the whole thing went live. Uh, we had 200 additional commits uh, fixing stuff and making the experience better for you. Next slide. In order to um, bring this all online, we not only had to think about uh, the product itself, not to only think about the world itself, but we also had to think about the deployment. Um, the first commit on the deployer, it's a backend service that uh, brings the experience to you, has been done on uh, 26th of November. Um, we started the first instance, the first uh, clone of the work adventure um, through this deployer on 8th of December. And a couple of days beforehand, I was getting a bit swamped. I couldn't do all of the work anymore because I had to coordinate both of the projects. And so my colleague uh, took over for me and helped me out a lot. So I'll give over to him to explain what he did. Yeah, so um, imagine that, that on day minus five, I get a message from uh, a friend that, hey, help is needed. So I said, okay, let's do it. And uh, 
wrong tells me uh, that okay, so we can spawn an instance and we need to scale it somehow and do that. And I spawn the deployer and my music stops. I streamed music from the internet and I, I wonder why did it stop? And I have noticed that oh, there are a lot of logs now, like a lot. And I have finally on day minus four noticed that um, the deployer was spawning its uh, copies of itself each uh, few seconds uh, in a loop. Uh, so that was the state back then. Uh, since day minus four until day one, we have uh, basically rewritten the thing. And uh, at, um, well, day one, we were ready. Well, almost ready. I mean, uh, we have like four instances deployed. And I forgot to mention that when we were about to deploy 200 once at once, uh, it wouldn't work because all of, all of the things would time out. Uh, so we patch things quickly. Uh, uh, and uh, 13 o'clock, we've had our first deployment. This worked and everything was fine. And wait, why is everyone on one instance? So it turns out that we've had a bug, uh, not in the deployer, in the app that would move you from the lobby to the lobby on a different map. So during the first day, we have We've had a lot of issues of people not seeing each other because they were all on different instances of, of the lobby. So uh, we were working uh, hard. And next slide, please, so we can uh, see that. Uh, we're working hard to uh, reconfigure that to bring you together in the assembly. So I think we have succeeded. Uh, you can see the population graph on this slide. Uh, the first day was uh, our almost most popular uh, one. And uh, the next day, it would seem that, OK, it's not as popular, but we have hit the peak of uh, 1,000 and uh, 600 users uh, that day. Uh, what else about this? The most popular instance was the lobby. Of course, uh, the second most popular instance was uh, hardware hacking area for a while, then uh, the third, I think. Next slide, please. <clears throat> uh, we have counted, uh, well, first of all, we have, we've had uh, in total about 205 assemblies. Uh, the number was increasing day by day because people through the whole Congress, they were working on their maps. Uh, for a while, uh, CERT uh, had over a thousand maps active in their assembly, which led to the map server crashing. Some of you might have noticed that uh, it uh, stopped working uh, quite a few times during day three, and they have reduced the number of maps to 255, and that was fine. Uh, at the end of day three, I have counted uh, about 628 uh, 28 maps. Uh, this is less than uh, is than was ava available in reality because I, you know, it was the middle of the night as always, and uh, it would it wasn't trivial to count them. But uh, in the maps I have found, we have. Uh, found over 2 million used tires. So that's something you can really explore. Uh, I wish I could have, but <laughs> deploying this was also fun. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and what? Yeah. Just a, a quick interject. I really want to thank everyone that has put work into their maps and made this whole experience work. We, we provided the infrastructure but you provided the fun, and so I really want to thank everyone. Yeah, uh, the more things happen on the infrastructure, the, the more fun we have. We uh, <laughs> especially don't like to sleep, so uh, we didn't. Uh, I basically uh, exchanged with Roang the way that I slept five hours 
during, during the night and uh, he slept five, five hours during the day and the rest of time uh, we were up. The record though is uh, incorrect. Rank is now 30 hours up uh, straight because the badges uh, were too important to bring to you uh, to go to sleep. Uh, the thing you see on this uh, graph is uh, undeployed instances. We were redeploying things constantly, usually in the form of redeploying half of the infrastructure at any given time. Uh, the way it was uh, developed, you wouldn't have noticed that. You wouldn't be kicked off uh, your instances, but uh, for a brief period of time, you wouldn't be an enter. You wouldn't be able to enter anyone. Uh, but uh, Next slide. Um, I have been joking for a few days of the Congress that I have been implementing a pseudo Kubernetes thing because it's automatically deployed things and managed things and so on. And uh, I have noticed by day three that I have achieved through enlightenment and through automation uh, because uh, we have decided to redeploy everything at once. Uh, at some point. The reason was that uh, we were being uh, DDoSed and we had to change something to mitigate that. Uh, and so we uh, we did that and everything was fine. But we made a typo. We made a typo and the deployment failed. And when uh, the deployment failed, it uh, deleted all the servers. So, uh, yeah. 405 servers got deleted <laughs> by uh, what I'm remembering uh, was a single line. So it uh, was brought up automatically, and uh, that wasn't a problem. It was all fine, but, uh, well, to early human, to automate mistakes is DevOps. Next slide. Uh, What's important is was that these 405 servers was provided by, uh, by Hetzner. We couldn't have done that without uh, their infrastructure, without their cloud. Uh, the reason we got up so quickly after uh, this was that the servers were deleted, but they could have been reprovisioned uh, almost instantly. So the whole thing took like 10 minutes to uh, get back up. And next slide, uh, that's all. Thank you for load testing our infrastructure and see you next year. Thank you, C3 Adventure. So um, this was clearly the first conference where that didn't clap for falling martyr bottles. If that's not a thing, maybe try next year. Um, the lounge, and I now have to ask for the next slide too. There are three lounge artists, and I was asked to read every country where someone is in because everyone had to make the lounge what it was, an awesome experience. So there were Berlin, Mexico City, Honduras, London, Zurich, Stockholm, Amsterdam, Rostock, Glasgow, Leipzig, Santiago de Chile, Prague, Hamburg, Mallorca, Krakau, Tokyo, Philadelphia, Frankfurt am Main, Köln, Moscow, Taipei, Taiwan, Hanover, Shanghai, Seoul, Seoul, I think, sorry, Vienna, Hong Kong, Karlsruhe, and Guatemala. Thank you guys for making the loud. So the next is the hub. And hey, Shaw should be waiting in Studio 2. Thank you guys for making me out. So the next is the hub. And hey, Shaw should be waiting in Studio 2. Um, software is based in Django, and it's re yeah, intended to be used for the next event. Um, the problem is, it was a new software. Uh, we had to do a lot of integrations um, 
yeah, live um, during setup, during uh, day zero, day. Oh, okay. No. Okay. Yeah. Hi. Uh, I'm presenting uh, the uh, hub, which is a uh, software we wrote for this uh, conference. Um, yeah, it's based on uh, different components. Um, all of them are based on Django. It's uh, intended to be used on future events as well. Um, our main problem was it's a new software. We uh, wrote it and uh, yeah, a lot of the integrations were only possible on day zero or day one. And uh, yeah, so even still t today on day four, we did a lot of updates, commits to the repository, and even that numbers on the screens are already outdated again. But uh, yeah, as you meant, could possibly see, we uh, have a lot of uh, commits all day, night, or all night long, uh, only a small ditch at uh, 6 a.m. Sorry for that. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, yeah, for the numbers, uh, you are quite busy using the platform. Uh, some of these numbers on the screen are already outdated again. Um, out of the 360 uh, assemblies which registered, um, only 300 got accepted. Most of them were, uh, yeah, um, event uh, or people wanting to do a workshop and trying to register an assembly or duplicates. So please organize yourself. Um, events, uh, currently we have over 940 in the system. You're still clicking events, nice. Thanks for that. Uh, the events are um, coordinating, uh, coordinating with the studios. So we are integrating all of the events of all the studios and the individual ones and the self-organized sessions, all of them. Uh, a new feature, um, the badges. Um, currently, you have created 411. Um, and yeah, from these badges redeemed, we have uh, 9,000. 269 achievements and 19,000 stickers. Um, documentation, sadly, was uh, 404 um, because, yeah, we were really busy doing uh, stuff. S some documentation has already been written, but uh, yeah, more uh, documentation is will uh, will come uh, available later. Uh, we will open source the whole thing, of course, um, but. Uh, Right now, we're still in production and uh, cleaning of things. And uh, yeah, finally, uh, for some numbers, uh, total requests per seconds were about 400 um, in the night um, when the uh, world was redeploying. Then we only had about 50 requests per second, but it maxed up to 700 uh, requests per second. And the authentication for the world uh, for the 2D adventure um, it was about 220 requests per second, more or less stable um, due to some bugs and due to some heavy usage. So, uh, yeah, we appreciate that you uh, use the platform, use the uh, new hub, and hope to see you uh, on the next event. Thanks. Hello, Hub. Uh, thank you, Hub. And the next is Bitter Lars is waiting for us. He's from the C3 Audi team, and um, he will tell us what he does and his team did this year. Hi, I'm Bitter Lars from C3 Audi, and we've been really busy this year. Um, as you can probably see by the numbers on my next slide, <laughs> we have 37 confirmed RT angels. And today we surpassed the 200 hours uh, mark. <laughs> we have, we've had 10 organ numbers leading up to the event, and there are almost 5 million unique pixels in our repository. <laughs> Um, I'm pretty convinced we've managed to create the smallest fairy dust of RC3 provided by an actual space engineer. And the tree of solitude 
is not the only thing we've managed to create uh, contribute to this wonderful experience. On our next slide, <laughs> you can see <laughs> that we also contributed six panel sessions for autistic creatures to discuss their experiences and five play sessions for them to socialize. Uh, we helped uh, to contribute a talk, a podcast, and an external panel to the big streams. And on our own panels, we've had up to 80 participants that needed to be split up to five breakout rooms so they could all have a meaningful discussion. And all their ideas and thoughts were um, anonymized and scored, uh, stored on more than 1,000 lines of markdown documentation that you can find on the internet. But <laughs> 1,000 lines of markdown wouldn't be enough for me to express the gratitude I have towards all the amazing creatures that helped us make this experience happen and um, for all the amazing teams that, that worked with us. I'm so happy to see you again soon, but now I think I will need some solitude for myself. Bye. Thank you, Beta Lars. So, uh, Lindworm, are you ready? The next one is a video, as far as I know. It's from the C3 Inclusion Operations Center. I don't know the short name. C3 IOWOC. And I'm just counting down. Three, two, run, go. So video is like a very difficult thing to play in those days because we only used to do th stuff live. Live means that a lot of pixels and traffic is done from this here, from this glass to all the wires and cables and back to the glass of your screen. And this is like magic to me somehow, although I am only being a robot to talk synchronously with all the head deck. Okay, now I spent already enough time. I think um, to switch back to Lindy with the video. Oh, I tell you what we're going to The event for everyone, and especially people with Hello everyone, I'm NWNG from the new C3 Inclusion Operations Center. This year, we've been working on accessibility guides to help the organizing teams and assemblies improve the event for everyone, and especially people with disabilities. We have also worked with other teams individually to figure out what can still be improved in their specific range of functions, but there is still a lot to catch up on. Additionally, we have published a completely free and accessible CSS design template that features dark mode and an accessible font selection. And it still looks good without JavaScript. 100 internet points for that. For you visitors, we have been collecting your feedback through mail or Twitter and won't stop after the Congress. If you stumbled across some barriers, please get in touch via c3ioc.de or at c3inclusion on Twitter to tell us about your findings. Thanks a lot for having us. Thank you for the video. Finally, Technic is working. We should. Does someone know computers? Maybe. Kritis is one of them. And he's waiting in Studio One to tell us something about C3 Yellow or C3 Gelb, wie wir hier sagen.
Yeah, welcome. Uh, I'm still looking at this hard drive. Maybe you remember this uh, from the very beginning. It has to be disinfected uh, really thoroughly. And um, I guess I can take it out by the end of the event. And uh, for the next slide with the words, please. Um, we did uh, found roughly 777 um, hand wash options and uh, 3FF uh, waste disposal possibilities. We checked the correct date on almost all of the 175 disinfectant um, um, uh, options you had around here. And because at a certain point of time, people from CERT were not uh, um, reachable in uh, the CERT room because they were running around everywhere else in this great 2D world, we had the chance to bypass and channel all the information because there were two digital cats on a digital tree. And so we got the right help to the right option. Next slide, please. Um, we have a couple of uh, options ongoing. A lot of work had uh, been done uh, before. We had all the studios with uh, all the corona things uh, going on uh, before, but uh, now we think um, we should really um, watch into an uh, angel disinfectant swimming basin for the next time to have there the maximum option of uh, cleanliness. And we will talk with the Bock if we can maybe achieve to use this globally maxi cubes for the chunk in the upcoming time. Apart from that, um, in order to get more um, Bachblüten and everything else, we need someone who is able to um, help us with the Potenzieren for, uh, for homeopathic um, uh, um, substances. So if you feel welcome with, uh, with that, please just uh, drop us a line to info at 33 gelb. Thank you very much and good luck. Thank you, Critis. Finally, happy to hear your voice. I only know you from Twitter, where um, we retreat our stuff together. Or I yours and you mine don't. Maybe you're going to change it, please. Um, talking about messages, Chaos Post was here too. And a tree later, whom we already heard uh, earlier, has more to say. Okay, um, welcome back. It's me again. I've uh, changed outfits a bit. I'm not here for the Signal Angels anymore, but for Chaos Post. So, uh, yeah, we had an online office this year again, as we had with the Devox before. And I've got some mail numbers for you that should be on the screen right now. Uh, if, if it's not, if it's still the title page, uh, please switch to the first one uh, where it lists a lot of numbers. And uh, uh, we had uh, 576 messages delivered total. This is numbers from around uh, uh, half to six, and uh, 12 of them weren't, we weren't able to deliver because, well, non-existent mailboxes or full mailboxes mostly. We delivered mails to 40, 34 TLDs, uh, the most going to Germany, to .de domains, uh, followed by .com, .org, .net, and uh, to Austria with .at. We had a couple of motives you could choose from. The most popular one was a fairy dust at sunset. Uh, 95 people selected that. Next slide. Uh, about our service quality, we had um, a minimum delay from the message coming in, uh, us checking it, and uh, it going out for, for uh, about a bit more than four seconds. The maximum delay was about seven hours. That was overnight when no agents were ready or they were all asleep or having being busy with i don't know the lounge or something and on average a message took you uh, took us 33 minutes from you putting it into our mailbox to it getting out some fun facts uh, we had issues delivering to t online at the first two days uh, but we managed to get that fixed a different mail provider refused our mail because it contained the string c3 world the domain in uh, the mail text and apparently new domains are scary and you can't trust them or something uh, we created a ticket with them they fixed it and it was super fast super nice service uh, yeah also some people tried to um, send digital postcards to mastodon accounts because they look like email addresses or something um, another thing that's not on a slide is we had another uh, new feature this time that was our named recipients so you could uh, for example send mail to cert without knowing uh, their address and they also have uh, a really nice postcard wall where you can see all the postcards 
you sent them. The link for that is on uh, Twitter. Thank you. Thank you, uh, so. Chaos Post. Uh, Lindholm, are you there? Yeah, yeah, ich bin da, ich bin da. Hello. So we are You're hearing almost me? done. I hear you. So I have to switch some more uh, uh, slides. slides again. It's kind of stressy for me, really. <laughs> you're, you're doing an awesome job. Thank you for doing it. <laughs> so just out of curiosity, um, did you have problem accepting any cookies or so? No, not really. Uh, I heard Why? somewhere that some really smart people had problems using the site because of cookies. Oh, no, that was not my problem. I only couldn't use the site because of overcrowding. That was often oh. one of my my little problems. And I, please, I hope uh, so, you don't see what I'm doing right now in the background with uh, starting our pets and so on. And as um, far as I know, yeah. you... what I wanted to say to all of you, this was the first Congress where we have so many women and so many non-cis people running that show and being up front the camera and making everything up. I would really thank you all. Thank you that you made that possible. And uh, thank you that we get more and more diverse year by year. I can only second that. And now we are switching to the C3 infrastructure yeah, we um, need to. I'm sure a lot of questions will be answered by them. And I try to make up the slides Yay. for that, but I do not find them right Let's now. Oh. On TV. Uh, yeah, welcome to the infrastructure review of the team infrastructure. Uh -oh. I'm not quite sure if we have the uh, newest revision of the slides because my version of the stream isn't loading right now. So maybe, Lindworm, is it possible to press Control R? And if you're seeing a burning computer, then we have the actual slides. Let's just play oh. karaoke without the background music. Yeah, and without the PowerPoint presentation in real time. Yep. <laughs> now I'm seeing me. Let's wait a few seconds until we see the slide. You want to wait the entire stream delay? <laughs> it's just about 30 to one minute. Well done. Yeah, I'm Tease and I'm waiting. And this is Patrick and yep. he's waiting too. Yeah, but that's in the middle of the slides. Can we go? Okay. Yeah. I'm now seeing something in the middle of the slides, but yeah, it seems fine. Okay. Yeah. We are the team C3 Infra, RC3 Infra. We're creating the infrastructure. Uh, next slide. We had. Uh, about nine terabytes of RAM and 1,700 CPU cores. On the whole event, there's only one dead SSD. It died because everything's broken. We had five dead RAID controllers and didn't bother to replace the RAID controllers, just replaced them with new servers. And a 100% uptime. Next slide. We looked about 42 hours uh, on starting screens of enterprise servers. 20 minutes max is what HP delivered. And we are now certified enterprise observers. We had only 27% visitors using IPv6. So that's even less than Google publishers. And even though we had uh, almost full IPv6 coverage, uh, except some 
really, really shady out of band management networks. We're still not at the IPv6 coverage that we are hoping for. I'm not quite sure if that's the right slides, but I'm not quite sure where we are in the text. Uh, yeah, Patrick. Yeah, so um, before the uh, Congress, there was one prediction. There's no way it cannot be not DNS. And uh, well, it was DNS at least once. So uh, we checked that box and let's go over to the next topic, um, OS. We've uh, provisioned about 300 uh, nodes, and it was an Ansible-powered madness. So, uh, yeah, there was full disk encryption on all nodes. Uh, no IPs locked in the access logs. We uh, took extra care of that, and we configured minimal logging wherever possible. So um, in the case of some problems, we only had warnings uh, available, and um, yeah, no, uh, no info logs, no debug logs, uh, just uh, the minimal logging configuration. And with uh, some software, we had to uh, pipe logs to death null because the software just wouldn't stop uh, uh, logging IPs, and we didn't want that. So no personal data in logs, so no GDPR headache, and your data is safe with us. The Ansible Madness I've uh, talked about was a magical deployment that de-bootstrapped into the live system and assimilated into the LC3 infrastructure uh, while it's still running. So um, yeah, if you didn't boot the machine, um, then uh, well, it's uh, just running. Um, when a OS deployment was broken, it was almost always due to network or routing, at least the OS team claims that, and uh, this claim is disputed by um, the network team, of course. At uh, one time, the deployment broke because of a trigger-heavy infra-angel, um, but uh, let's not talk about that. Um, of course, um, at this point, um, we want to announce our uh, great cooperation with our uh, gold uh, sponsor, DDoS24.net, who provided an excellent service of uh, handcrafted uh, requests to our infrastructure. Um, there was a great demand, uh, or great uh, public uh, demand, um, with uh, some million requests uh, per second uh, for a while. Um, but even during the uh, highest uh, or peak demand, uh, we were able to serve most of these services. We've uh, provided some infrastructure to Levoc, and uh, they've quickly made use of the um, provided infrastructure, deployed there. Uh, overall, an amazing time to market. We had uh, six locations, and those six locations were some wildly different special snowflakes overall. So um, we had Düsseldorf. 816 GPU cores uh, there, two terabytes of RAM, and we had uh, 10 gigabits per second interconnect. There was also a one terabit per second uh, infiniband uh, available, but sadly we couldn't use that. It would have been nice. Um, the machine start had a weird and ancient IPMI, which made it hard uh, to deploy there, and the admin uh, on location never deployed bare metal hardware to a data center, so um, there were also some learning experience there. Fun fact about uh, Düsseldorf, this was the data center with the maximum heat. One server, seven units, uh, over 9,000 watts of power, 11.6 to be exact, um, which uh, where they had some, uh, to take some creative uh, heat management uh, um, uh, solutions. Next was uh, Frankfurt. There we had 620 gigabit of total uplink capacity. Um, and we actually only used uh, 22 gigabit uh, during peak demand, again, by our premium sponsor, DDoS24.net. Um, there was zero network con uh, congestion, and 1.5 gigabit uh, per second were IP versions. So uh, there was no real traffic challenge um, for the uh, network engineers of you. It was a full layer three architecture with uh, MPLS between uh, the uh, LAN routers, and there was a night shift on the 26th and 27th for more service because uh, some shipments didn't arrive yet. Um, the fun fact about this data center was the maximum bandwidth. Uh, some servers there had 50 gigabit uplink uh, uh, on the server configured, 
Um, it was the data center with the maximum manual intervention. Of course, we had the most infrastructure there, and it wasn't oversubscribed any, uh, at any point. We had some hardware in Stuttgart, which was basically the easiest deployment. Um, there were also some night shifts, but uh, thanks to Neuner and team, uh, this was a really easy deployment. It was also the most silent DC, so um, no incident from day minus five until now. So um, if you're currently watching from Stuttgart now, you can uh, create some issues because now we set it. Uh, Wolfsburg uh, was the smallest DC. We only had three service D and we managed to kill uh, one hardware rate controller, so we only could use two service there. Um, so yeah, and then uh, Hamburg was the data center with the uh, minimum uptime. We never could deploy to this data center because there was a broken net boot and we couldn't uh, yeah, provision anything there. And of course, uh, the uh, sixth uh, data center was the Hetzner Cloud, uh, where we deployed on all locations. Um, deployment fun facts. We received a COVID warning from the data center. Uh, luckily, it didn't affect us. It was at another location, but uh, thanks for the heads up uh, and uh, the warning. Um, the team lead of a sponsor uh, needed to install uh, Proxmox in a DC um, with no knowledge uh, or without any clue what uh, they were doing. Uh, we installed Proxmox in the Hamburg DC, and no server actually wanted to talk to us, so we had to give up on that. And uh, there had to be a lorry relocated uh, before we could deploy um, other uh, servers. So that's that was standing in the way there. Now let's uh, get to Jitsi. Um, our peak user count were 1,105 users at the same time on the same in, uh, cluster. Um, I don't know if it was at the same uh, time as the peak user count, but the peak conference count was 204 conferences. Um, I hope you can still beat that uh, today, but uh, this uh, is data from yesterday. And the peak conference size was 94 uh, participants in a single conference. And um, let me uh, give condolences to your uh, computer because that must have um, been hard on, on it. Our peak outgoing video traffic on the uh, JTC video bridges was 1.3 uh, gigabit per second, and we had uh, about uh, three quarters of the participants were streaming video, and uh, one quarter of them had video disabled. Interesting ratio. Our Jitsi deployment was completely automated with Ansible, so it was zero to Jitsi in 15 minutes. We broke up uh, the Jitsi cluster into four shards uh, to have better scalability and resilience. So if one shard were down, it would only affect a part of the conferences and not all of them, because there are some uh, infrastructure components that you can't really scale or cluster. So we went to, uh, with a sharding route. Our JTC uh, video bridges were about 42% peak, uh, 42 uh, peak usage, excluding our smallest video bridge, which was only eight cores and eight gigabytes, which we added in the beginning uh, to test some stuff out, and it remained in there. And yes, we over-provisioned a bit. There will also be a blog post on our JTC uh, meet deployment uh, coming in the future, and uh, for the next time we, or for, for the upcoming uh, days, we will enable um, 4K uh, streaming on there, so um, why not use that? And uh, we want to say thanks to the FF Meet project, uh, which co uh, who contacted us after our initial load test and gave us some tips uh, to handle load effectively and so on. We also tried making deck uh, uh, call out uh, or. Call it, no, deck uh, call out uh, working. Uh, spent 48 hours uh, trying to get it work, but uh, there were some troubles there. So um, uh, sadly, no adding uh, deck uh, participants to Jitsi conferences for now. Um, Jitsi.rc3.world will be running over New Year, so you can use that to um, um, to get, uh, to get together with your friends and so on over the new year, stay separate, don't visit each other, please. Um, don't contribute uh, to COVID-19 spread. Um, you've got the alternative there. 
Now let's go over to monitoring. Tschüss. Yeah. Uh, thanks. First of all, uh, it's uh, really funny how you edit this page, but uh, Reveal.js doesn't work that way until Lindworm reloads the page, which he hopefully doesn't do right now. Uh, everything's fine, so you can leave it to me. Uh, yeah, monitoring. We had a Prometheus uh, and a Lightmancher setup uh, completely driven out of our uh, solemnly uh, one and only source of truth, our netbox. We received about 43,885 uh, critical alerts. It's uh, looking at my mobile phone, it's uh, definitely more right now. And about 13,070 warnings, also definitely more right now. Uh, and we tended about 100 of them. The rest was kind of useless. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, as, it's, uh, <laughs> as it's important uh, to have an abuse hotline and an abuse contact, I uh, received uh, two network abuse messages, uh, both from Hetzner, one of our providers, um, letting us know that someone doesn't like our infrastructure as much as we do, uh, props to ddos24.net and this, and we got uh, one call at our DDoS hot, uh, at our abuse hotline, and it was a person who wanted to, to buy a ticket from us. Sadly, we were out of tickets. Next slide, please. Uh, some other stuff is uh, we got a premium Ansible deployment brought to you by Turing Complete YAML. That sounds scary. <laughs> and well, we had about 130k DNS updates. Uh, Thanks to the world team at this point, they're really stressing our DNS RP with the redeployments. And also our DNS Prometheus and Grafana are deployed on and by NixOS uh, thanks to Flipge and head over to Flipge's interweb thingy. He wrote some blog posts about how to deploy stuff with his NixOS. And the next slide, please, and the last slide from the infra team is uh, the list of our sponsors. Uh, huge thanks to all of them. It won't be possible to uh, create such a huge event and such loads of infrastructure without them. And that's everything we have. Amazing. Thank you um, for all you've done. Uh, truly incredible and sharing everything to the public. So I promised that there will be a kind of behind the scenes look of this infrastructure talk or review. And I really have nothing to do with it. Everything was done by completely different people. I'm only a herald somehow lost and tumbled into this dream. And so I'm just going to say, switch to wherever, show us the magic. Three hours ago, I got a call. Hello, and welcome from the last point of the infrastructure review and greetings from Karlsruhe. So three hours ago, I got a call from Lindworm, and he asked me, how is it with uh, this last talk we have? Um, it may be a bit complicated. And he told me, OK, we have a speaker. I'm the herald. Oh, as always. So, And then we realized, yeah, we don't have only one speaker. We have 24. And for that, we called Chaos West and built up an infrastructure, which Dampfkatze will explain you now in a short minute, I think so. Thank you. Um, yes. Um, oh, I lost the sticker. OK. Um, after we called uh, Chaos West, we um, came up with this monstrosity of the video uh, cluster. And uh, we start here. Um, the teams uh, streamed via OBS Ninja onto three uh, Chaos, Chaos West uh, um, studios. They uh, were brought together via RTMP on our Mix1 uh, local uh, studio. And then we pumped that into Mix2, which uh, pumped it uh, further to the work. 
The slides were brought in uh, via uh, another OBS Ninja directly onto Mix2. They came, came from Lindworm. Um, also, the closing you will see shortly, hopefully, will also come from there. Um, and Yusuf and Lindworm were directly connected via OBS Ninja onto our Mix1 um, computer. And uh, Mix2 also has uh, the studio camera you're watching right now. And for the backend communication, we had a mumble with, uh, connected with our uh, audio matrix. And uh, Lindworm, Yusuf, and the teams, and we on the, in the studio uh, locally could all talk together. And now back to the closing with, uh, no, uh, to the Herald News Show, I think. Uh, Lindworm will introduce it to you. Lindworm is live. Is Yusuf still there, or do you come with me? So it will take a second, I'll do Yusuf years. So th thank you very much to, for this review. It was as chaotic as the Cold Congress.